Welcome to a product walkthrough of the Rabbit R1. And I have a hot take, and that's I actually like this thing. A lot of ink has been spilled across the internet in cut and paste journalism and all the things it cannot do. But with innovation, it's always not going to do everything in a perfect way. That's not how innovation works, and we'll get to that later in this. But let's see what it actually is and what we can do with it right now and maybe things that it can improve on. A product walkthrough is different than a product review or an unboxing, which you'll see all over YouTube. Of course, we are coming at it more from a product management lens with a focus on how it's designed to solve user problems. We're peeking behind the curtain to see not just what the product does, but why it does things in a certain way and understanding that product story and how it aims to fit in people's lives. Studying it this way allows us to develop our product sense, which is our deep knowledge that becomes intuitive about what makes a great product. This comes from understanding user needs deeply, spotting opportunities for improvements, predicting how changes will impact users, balancing features in simplicity, knowing when to say no to ideas. That helps us figure out what will work in the market and delight users. It comes from experience, user empathy, and constant learning about those users, research especially, and different trends in technology. That lets us identify the right problems to solve because we can't solve everything, so we need to prioritize features effectively, then we can make decisions that lead to successful products. We don't just want to build what users say they want. We want to understand their deeper needs to craft solutions they'll love in the long term, even if they didn't know they needed them. The Rabbit R1 device, and make sure you add R1 when you're researching this, there are other Rabbit devices on the internet and they are not a part of this analysis, has got a cute little screen, a nifty scroll wheel that feels really good when you scroll on it, and it was beautifully designed by Teenage Engineering from Sweden that makes a great set of retro futuristic beautiful devices that are a delight to use. What was the score of the Royals game yesterday? The Rabbit R1 is a standalone device. Should it even be a standalone device or should it be an app? That is the question being asked, especially after the Apple keynote and all of the AI announcements, Google Gemini and Amazon announcing all of the integrations and creations that they have to build into the products that we know and use already. I think there is a lot to say for how that's going to transform how we do work. And those are all wonderful as well. And also, the need we mentioned for that simplicity, for that focus, for that reduction of overwhelm is absolutely still there. And I do think it's interesting to have a standalone device for that for some people in some situations. The large language model understands what you say, but the large action model gets things done. We use LAM to bring AI from words to action. Rabbit uses a different term in the language they use to talk about the innovation that they are claiming to have made called a large action model. So in contrast to the large language model that we're used to with ChatGPT, Claude, and others, this large action model has a different approach where they're trying to come up with a way to interact with services more fluidly. This approach is pretty innovative, so that's really flexible. That's not constrained by all this pre-programmed capability that has to happen, and it's adaptable using AI. So this is definitely a possibility of where things might be going, and this is an early experiment on how that might work. Who is the R1 device for, and what are they using it to do? The jobs to be done framework shows why customers hire a product or service to accomplish a specific task or achieve a particular outcome. The job to be done here for the R1 is to simplify digital interactions, full stop. The app ecosystem is increasingly complex. I have 500 apps on my phone, I'm sure you do as well. It is absolutely out of control and each one needs to be logged in and out 
and have different connections to different services and then be updated, it's a joke. And so are notifications. There are a sea of notifications of a mixed set of priorities that are impossible to sort through and archive and go to multiple devices at the same time. And what is super valuable here is you're reducing that cognitive load. You're able to perform tasks across different apps with just simple commands. The power of LLMs lets us navigate all those services and information sources that we need without having to go through all those individual apps. That actually solves for some of the emotional needs around that, so you have less anxiety from being overloaded by all of these apps. You have more of a feeling of a sense of control over your digital life, and it's just peace of mind in that simplification. That definitely appeals to a lot of these trends we have around minimalism and digital detoxing. I could even see myself using this on a yoga retreat just to check something important about the weather or maybe something about the philosophy that I wanted to understand without getting annoyed by all of the other notifications that would come in or being distracted by the temptation to go onto social media and scroll forever. That helps align with these mindful uses of technology. What I like and what needs work with the R1. So I do roses for what I like and what needs work are thorns. So a rose for me for the R1 was being able to get off my phone for a few hours and be away from those trillions of apps and notifications, which is absolutely amazing. I was able to cook lunch and ask for a recipe and focus there without having my face in a screen that disconnected me from what I was doing, was able to go outside and touch grass and enjoy while I could still access the infinite information that is satisfying for my curiosity. Give me a recipe for... Filipino chicken thighs. Let me think. A popular Filipino chicken thigh recipe is chicken adobo. Here's a simple recipe. Ingredients. Six chicken thighs. One half cup soy sauce. One half cup vinegar. I think it absolutely looks great. There are a few funky things like the scroll. I keep wanting to do backwards. I don't know if that's just a me thing or other people, but uh, it does have a good feel to it. I love being able to see the results visually. That's one thing that bothered me about the home devices with uh, Amazon and Google and everything. Having that actual recipe there is a lot better than just hearing it, having it go in one ear and out the other. I do like logging in and seeing that timeline of all the requests. That history is shown in a really different, more chronological way that collapses in a nice way, and it shows an 8-bit version of the pictures you took, which is really cool. I have a little bit of a style to that. Some of the thorns, like signing up and linking to those services, was really long. I don't know what's going on with the server there or the code, but it's super slow. What are these? These appear to be two glasses containing an amber-colored liquid, likely a type of liquor or spirit. The glasses have a distinct yellow-orange color and curved shapes, suggesting they may be used for drinking beverages like whiskey, scotch, or another distilled alcoholic beverage. Uh, no, they're glasses for face. The image recognition did not work that great for me in my examples that I tried. I imagine that's just because of the model that it's using, and I'm sure that will change. Right now, it doesn't appear to be that useful to me, but that use case never really was that useful for me. I think maybe if I'm taking a picture of a type of bird or a type of tree, maybe, then yes, but I usually know what I'm looking at, so I don't know why we always use that as an example. Another thing is that there's no way I'm ordering Uber or DoorDash on this until I can confirm it's not going to accidentally do something crazy. I'm a little bit nervous about that. I think I'm going to watch some other people try it and see what the options are or if I need to set up anything ahead of time. I will probably experiment with that, but I am scared. All right, cutting through the hype, let's get real about the R1. We've seen a ton of, well, revolutionary gadgets come and go, but this little super neon orange box it's actually trying to solve a problem we all have with app overload and solve a problem on the other side with development app overload. Is it perfect? Hell no. Will it replace your smartphone? Probably not. Definitely not. But you've got to respect what they're trying to do here. The minimalist design is definitely refreshing. No surprise with teenage engineering there. There's no bells and whistles, just a screen, a wheel, and a button. It's the anti-smartphone in a weird way. That's kind of cool. So is the large action model actually a thing? It's pretty ambitious, maybe too much, but hey, at least they're swinging for the fences instead of churning out another Me Too product. And 
kind of challenging us on our thinking. So will it catch on? I am a little bit skeptical of that, but hey, I'm rooting for it. We need more companies willing to experiment and challenge the status quo and more power to them. This is a bold experiment in simplifying our digital lives. It might fail spectacularly, but it also might push the industry in a new direction. 